Good morning, good morning, hello, 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 Facebook, and everyone in Femme Fatale Fit Club. It's your girl here, Deanna from Femme Fatale Fit Club, of course, or Coach D for short. And I have an amazing, amazing chat for you guys today. We are going to be joined by Tamika G again, and she is going to share with us, let me let her in, and she is going to be sharing with us Hey, Tamika, how you doing? Hello, I'm good. It worked. It worked. <laughs> I test drove it. Awesome. So if only I could get my laptop to work, but that's another story. <laughs> so I said, oh, eyes, let's give it time for some people to join in. Okay, I see one eye, but everybody knows the rules of the road. When you join, make sure you share your name or city or state or a country that you're joining from, because hopefully this is worldwide and global. Um, and sit back, relax, and listen uh, to some of the pearls that uh, Tamika G has to share. We will be talking about, you know, uh, how to eat in a balanced way for healthy weight loss and healthy weight maintenance, okay? And I also want all of you to stay with us to the very end. We have a little, little surprise for you as well. So let me start <laughs> saying hi to folks. Hey, Tiara. How's it going? How you doing with all this snow? It's one of my clients, clients of my boot camp. She's amazing. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I see four eyes. So please introduce yourself, uh, your name, city, state, or country that you're watching from. And we're going to get started. Okay. Why you guys are doing that. Also, other uh, tip. I have my laptop set up to manage some of the questions or some of the things that are going on since I'm on here on my phone live. Uh, so if you see me turning, I'm paying attention. <laughs> also, <laughs> I'm a one woman show. Sounds, okay? <laughs> Sounds good. I would like to turn over to Tamika. Please introduce yourself and let's start. Yes. So first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Tamika. I'm a holistic wellness coach, meaning that I take the full mind, body, spirit approach to weight loss. Um, from my own experience, I've lost 90 pounds and I've been able to maintain it for 15 years. So ever since losing the weight, it's been my divine mission to show women around the world how possible it is to do it in a sustainable manner. So I've coached thousands of women. I have lots of programs. I'm always trying to help. I've now dedicated my life in the last four years to quitting my full-time job and going at this full-time. We do wellness retreats. Um, it's my life's purpose. So that's, that's a little bit about me. Uh, that's awesome. So that is mm -hmm. so I'm seeing we got 10 eyes in here. People are coming in. They're pulling in. I'm also going to be sharing this live out to the world. So again, see me moving. I'm working. All right. So we got you. All good. <laughs> you got, hey there. So we have people watching. We got Tiara. Yeah, Tiara's always first. She likes to be first. <laughs> oh, hi, hi, Tiara. Thanks for joining. Yeah, and I'm just waiting for people to introduce themselves. But with that said, um, one of the questions, and it's always a question, is people, you know, they want to, they go to exercise, but a lot of times the hard part really comes uh, in the kitchen and what happens in their lives the other 23 hours outside of their um, exercise routine. Um, so one of the initial questions that I have and some people have asked is how, um, when you have limited time and you're busy and things like that, how do, how do you uh, you know stop you know you know stop cravings and make sure you eat because people are skipping breakfast and things like that and not because they're intermittent, intermittent fasting they're just skipping it <laughs> because mm -hmm. on the run. So I think one of the things we do as society is we overcomplicate things. It's my another divine purpose and passion I have is to show people how simple it can be like to make a really healthy tuna sandwich or to make a really healthy chicken breast sandwich probably takes five to ten minutes i think we get so bombarded by having to make everything from scratch and everything super organic and everything needs to be like what we see on social media that it's almost a deterrent because it feels so overwhelming to have to live up to these expectations what i really like to help people see is how eating healthy can be really simple if we just simplify it 
Um, so that's one thing I would say off the bat. Let's stop trying to do the same things that like the organic full-time Instagrammers are doing because yeah. that's their job. We have other things to do in our life and let's just simplify. Eating healthy can be really simple. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's opportunities for you to do everything from scratch and eat whole eat organic, but there's also opportunities for you to just not go to the drive-thru and find something a little healthier in your kitchen. Mm -hmm. So I always start with let's manage those expectations, let's simplify things. And then when we approach it that way, we can refine and we can get more strategic as we get into a habit, but let's start with just being simple first. So I know for some people, simple to them means eating the same meals every day and people's taste buds, they like variety and they're like, that's boring. I don't want to eat the same thing all week or what have you. What, what suggestions do you have for those kinds of those folks with those sentiments? Yeah. So if you're someone who likes variety, then I would just plan. I mean, if you were to do a Google search of healthy meals that take under 10 minutes to cook, you would come up with thousands and thousands of pages. So find maybe three, get the ingredients for them. Perhaps your meal prepper, perhaps not. Maybe in the morning you make your meals for the day, or maybe on Sunday you make your meals for the next three days. Um, but find really simple things to do that you can have. There's something I see some people, some people, um, some of my clients will boil eight eggs on a Sunday oh, wow. and we'll have those eggs for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. And you can use those eggs in a salad or on a sandwich or for breakfast. You can do so much with it. Same thing with vegetables. You can chop up your vegetables on a Sunday and then you can use the same vegetables to stir fry one night or to put in a pasta or to have in a salad. Yeah. So again, I think we overcomplicate things. We can add a lot of variety and we can prep. Um, but I just think let's just get, let's deal with the big fish. The big fish in our world right now is really finding a way to just be healthy. Like let's figure out a way to stop reaching for the drive through and the fast food and just cooking food in our own homes. I think we just need to start there and then we can figure out ways to refine and get exciting and, and get a little adventurous down the road, but let's just take it back to basics. That's another thing I do with all my clients is let's bring it back to basics. Like, let's try to let's try to just deal with the really the really big fish right now and then we'll get to the other things down the road so the really big fish right now in my eyes in our society especially in our community is we just need to start eating healthy we need to stop the drive-through and we need to start eating healthy so that's a good point um i know when i started with my trainer eons ago back in 2008 i she i was asking her so you know what are some healthy foods that i can eat and the things that she told me weren't as healthy as I thought, I was like in shock. So she was like, you know, orange juice, uh, you know, especially from concentrate is, is lit, you know, riddled with sugar, you know, uh, yogurt with fruit at the bottom, a whole bunch of sh and, you know, sugar. And I'm like, what? I thought that was healthy. Or a uh, frozen waffles. That's not healthy either. <laughs> yeah, So can, exactly. Can you share some high level guidance of when you say eat healthy, what does that mean besides, you know, not going to the drive through or to a fast food restaurant, but some people might be going to shop grocery shopping, thinking it, picking healthy options. What are some things mm -hmm. to look out for? That's a really good question. So one thing you want to do is avoid being like drawn into the world of marketing. So anytime I see low fat, low this on a mark packaging, it's automatically a red flag because I'm like, okay, well, let me verify all the things that they're saying because the standards through the FDA are very gray. So when they call something organic or when they call something low fat or no sugar, yes. they have a lot of wiggle room into what that actually means. So there are a few things I have my clients do. First, let's look at the ingredients. If it, if you're, when you're reading those ingredients, if it looks like a grade 12 chemistry experiment and you can't pronounce half of the things, if I told you to take a sip of some crazy science hydrocolopticus, would you, the answer is no, but yet we eat it in our food. So ingredients are the first things to turn to. Um, I like to make sure my ingredients are simple, under 10 ingredients, anything artificial you see on there. They have 67, I think was the last count different ways of saying sugar, yeah. FDA approved. So just really be mindful of what you're putting in your body and keeping it as simple as possible. So ingredients are the first thing. The second thing is when you look at the actual nutritional table, mm -hmm. let's start, we always go to calories first. Let's start taking our eyes away from calories and looking at some of the other culprits. One culprit is sugar mm -hmm. and also look at the per serving. So sometimes like again, FDA rules, the per serving could be this big. 
and they'll say it's only one gram of sugar but if you have one peanut but if you have the whole thing you're probably going to be consuming a lot more so look at the serving size and look at the sugar the sugar for us is especially as a community one of our biggest achilles heels so i always have people look to the sugar look to the salt look to the fats fats aren't a bad thing but just make sure it's the right types of fats right um so stay away from trans fats for instance and look at the don't look at the carbohydrates because carbohydrates don't have to be bad if they're simple complex carbohydrates if they're complex carbohydrates they could be actually be quite good so when you're looking at the nutritional table i always tell people let's look at the serving size mm -hmm. let's look at the sugar let's look at the salt and some of these fats that they sneak into our diets to make it taste good but not be really great for us yeah and the ingredients yeah so that's how you can assess if something is healthy and just stay away from the marketing and the big shiny letters that tells you to buy it because yeah I think one time they said, try this vegan, um, what was it? It was try this vegetarian cheese. That was the marketing. I was like, cheese is vegetarian. They meant, I don't know if they meant vegan, but vegetarian is no, so they have really crazy ways of marketing to us. And it's like, yeah, try yeah. this vegetarian bread. Obviously bread is vegetarian. <laughs> So I saw one, I think I saw one, try, uh, you know, try this, uh, try this avocado is gluten free. Yeah. Exactly. Is it not? Oh my goodness. No, they did it. They went there. They went there. Exactly. That's no, ooh, gluten free. People are like, ooh, that catches attention. And I do tell people, you know, the front lip when I say, when they say, well, can I eat this? And my clients or somebody will show me a label. I said, no, show me the back label or the mm -hmm. side. But don't show me that front one. That, mm -hmm. that thing. That's where all the marketing, like, sure. all the marketing is on the front. <laughs> exactly. So like sometimes like when my clients in a rush, if they go to their local health food store and they buy a box of cereal that has five ingredients, I'm like, have some cereal every morning. You don't have to make this gourmet frittata. Just have a bowl of cereal. Like, you can make it really simple. Right. Let's just make sure we're eating real whole foods. Yes, but that frittata does have fit. Um, I know. <laughs> so what about this? Um, what about people who ask, you know, should I be vegan or should I be keto? Um, because I see other people having these amazing weight loss results, you know, what is your advice for those who have that type of question or inquiry? So the one question I ask all my clients is, you can do whatever you choose to do, but the main question is not should I do it, but how long can I do it? Because my, my biggest thing is, if you're gonna do a diet plan, eat, losing weight is actually the easy part. It's coming from someone who's lost 90 pounds and who's also helped thousands of women do the same losing weight can be the easy part because you can lose weight pretty easy on keto yeah. the question is can you sustain it because after you lose the weight you got to keep it off yep um so i always ask people whatever you want to do that's fine mm -hmm. I, I know some people who have been intermittent fasting for 10 years if you're okay to do that long term then power to you but my question always is how long can you sustain whatever it is you're about to embark upon yep and that's a real question you have to ask yourself because I think the last time I heard it was like 98% of people who lose extreme weight gain it back. Oh, wow. like, yeah, like if you look at the biggest loser, any of those shows, I think yeah. even the biggest losers, the 16 biggest losers, everybody who won the actual series for the 16 seasons, I think 14 of them gained the weight back. Wow. So, yeah, so there was a big New York Times article. So the question is yes, it's easy to lose the weight. We can do all of these things, these diet plans, but after you lose the weight, there's a whole nother journey <laughs> called life yes. that you got to do. Yes. So that's something we got to be super mindful of when it comes to any diet we choose to embark upon. Okay. So that, that definitely makes sense. And the last thing you hit on, the great segue, you said life. And I have encountered several people who are, um, who engage in emotional eating. What advice uh, do you have for those individuals? Yeah, um, as someone who is a recovering emotional eater and still dabbles in it every now and then, um, I mean, we are set up as a society to think that food is comfort. Hell, it's called comfort food. Mm -hmm. You know, the, everything we've seen since we've been a child is when, you know, you, you, you're, you have heartbreak, you go for the tub of ice cream. It's how we're conditioned to think that food is going to cure it. When in actuality, we know food is not a healer um, in that yes. sense. You know, food, food does not solve our issues. Right. So I always say when I have clients that struggle with emotional eating, and even for my own journey, we got to deal with the source. Mm -hmm. Where are the emotions coming from and deal with it then, whether it's 
going to therapy, whether it's dealing through other alternative forms, whatever suits you, mm -hmm. food is not the solution. And recognizing that and making that disconnect really, really helps. We have tactical things in our programs that we help people with like intuitive eating mm -hmm. and finding out and like actual practical, pragmatic things that I can share, but you can try to cover up all of the things, the practical tips and tricks and all these tactical things, but the, right. you gotta get to the source of the problem. Okay. Um, and oftentimes it is self-esteem, depression, mm -hmm. like things that people just don't deal with and they try to mask with food. So got to get to the source. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Like, well, you know, experience trauma and carry, mm -hmm. get it a drink. So it's like you said, take it out on fruits. And that, you know, unfortunate that food has to be a culprit. <laughs> yeah. Or a complete. But uh, so, yeah, that makes sense. So when you say balanced eating, share what that means. Balanced eating means, oh gosh, that's such a, that's a good question. Balanced eating for me mm -hmm. means free from extremes and free from restrictions, too many restrictions. Because what happens is we know the cycle, right? We get super excited about a diet plan and whether it's a smoothie plan diet or a keto diet or whatever, we get yep. super excited and we go all in. <laughs> And we are 100% focused for that short amount of time. And then two weeks later, we realize it's not sustainable forever. My body, I want to, I'm craving things. <laughs> and then we go way off the deep end. Mm -hmm. We eat all the things and we get into that binge session. That's where that balance becomes not necessarily balanced. We're going extremes and we're going in extreme directions. So instead of saying things like balance, I like to think in harmony. Like how can we live in a world where we can eat a salad for lunch and maybe have a piece of chocolate for after dinner or have a pizza night with our friends and the next day maybe maybe we have some more greens and we figure out ways to feel better about ourselves and how can we let live in a world where we're not on one side of the the coin and we're not in the the, the black or white zone but we kind of live in the gray so what that means for me is fun nights where i let myself have if i look at my week as a macro mm -hmm. From a macro perspective, I know Saturday nights are date nights, and that's for me and my man. We eat what we want, right. and I know I love chocolate. So maybe Mondays and Wednesdays and Thursdays, I enjoy some chocolate. Okay. The majority of my diet is clean. I would say about eighty percent. I really try to follow and be good to myself, just because I know that's what my body needs for longevity, health, and vitality. Mm -hmm. For twenty percent, I have fun. Tomorrow's Valentine's Day. I'm gonna <laughs> pop open a bottle of champagne. I'm gonna have some chocolate. I'm gonna buy all the 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 heart the heart candies because that's that. Balance. Yeah, and I think when we approach our lifestyle like that, it's sustainable. You know, there's no end date. It's just life. It's just life. Okay, so, so that is a, that. Those are good tips. But what if people, somebody, let's say, if I can't just eat just one, if I have, mm -hmm. I gotta have the whole bag. What? <laughs> what advice do you have for someone like that? So from my experience, what I've noticed is that when people binge, it's because they've restricted prior to the binge. Mm -hmm. So if you are binging all the time, again, we got to get to the source. There are emotional eating tactics there that there are emotional eating um, issues there that you need to deal with. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times when my clients are like, I just had like a whole cake to myself because I was on a diet for a week and it was just so hard. And I had so a lot of times it's this contrast, which is why I say for my client, she would have this one client was having a chocolate bar. She would be so good all week. And then on the one, on one, like on Saturday, she would like down chocolate bar, ice cream and all these things. And I was trying to explain to her how that necessarily wasn't balanced because what you're doing is you're, you're going through extreme deprivation throughout the week. And then one day you're just completely throwing away all the, I was like, what if you just had a little piece of chocolate a day? So you're not having this extreme restriction every day. Instead, you're just allowing yourself to live and allowing it to be a part. And she, Lo and behold, what happens with most of my clients is they no longer want to have this binge session because it's no longer the, 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 the candy we can't touch. It's just a part of our life and we're allowed to have a little bit each day. So that's how you find harmony with this lifestyle. You're not restricting yourself to the point where then when then something's in front of you, you want to put your face in it. <laughs> you're more so just allowing yourself to... Face play. Yeah, you're allowing yourself to eat a little bit each day and not create this big scary zone around it if that makes sense it's a psychological bit of a psychological play but binging typically happens after extreme restriction the forbidden i can't have it so i'm going to get it now <laughs> exactly now i'm gonna have it all it's like, no all it doesn't have it. to be that way <laughs> so we have we have some questions here 
Uh, so I'm just going to say Yushi because I don't want to butcher your name any further. <laughs> so I apologize. Uh, but her question is, can you explain macros more? Yes. So macronutrients are, when we look at our food, the three main nutrients that are predominant in our food. So we have fat, we have carbohydrates, and we have protein. So those are the big, the big, the big guns, the big nutrients in our food. And ultimately, when people talk about counting macros, they try to find a really good balance of those macros to hit your goals. Now, some people say 30% protein, 30% carbs, 40% fat. And basically finding a way to navigate what you eat um, to fit those macros. Mm -hmm. And I don't necessarily believe in counting macros. I believe in looking at your plate and making sure there's an equal balance of everything. So I like to see some healthy fats. That's avocados. That's yeah nuts those are things where predominantly the main macronutrient in that food is fat i like to make sure there are some healthy complex carbs complex carbs meaning that they are real healthy carbs veg um grains and legumes and things like that and even vegetables are a carb and then looking at protein having really healthy proteins so fish lean chicken organic grass-fed so the way macronutrients are is just really the amount of nutrients the macro the big nutrients in our food and what people tend to do when they're counting macros is finding the right balance and level to hit their goals. Because at the end of the day, it is kind of a science and people have just tried to manipulate that science to hit their goals. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. Hope that helped you. She, she laughed at me pronounce, pronouncing her. Well, hopefully she's not offended. <laughs> um, but we do have another question here uh, from Elizabeth Taylor. I work nights, always got to have a snack after I wind down at night. What would you suggest for a healthy snack at night before I go to sleep than eating bad snacks? Mm. I would say if you're, if the habit is snacking after late at night, you want to find something with like most majority water. Mm -hmm. So I would say obviously fruits and vegetables would be great because it's primarily water. Things like watermelon <laughs> would be really great. Um, I love watermelon with a bit of cinnamon sprinkled on it. Um, celery dipped in like a, a peanut butter or a hummus is really quite good. Managing the control, of course, of the sauces. Um, sometimes I find people don't necessarily need the snack to be sugary or filled with fat. It's more just the art of snacking they like. <laughs> so I always say if we can get like a vegetable in, that would be really great. But if you're someone who really loves to snack on something sweet, Dark chocolate's really great. One of the one of my favorite snacks is freezing bananas with drizzled dark chocolate on it and a little bit of sea salt. That's really, and if you freeze that, it's quite good. Or if you want to even throw some drizzled peanut butter and dark chocolate on that. Um, frozen blueberries kind of taste like really, really good. Frozen grapes also taste really good. Um, so I would say it really depends on your, maybe if you give me a little bit more insight into your taste buds, I can help you understand. But if it's just the habit of snacking, find something with like 90% water, like watermelon, where you can just, kind of enjoy it and it's healthy and it's not going to really be affecting you macronutrient wise. Right. Awesome. Especially since you're about to go to sleep. <laughs> I mean, over, -pro you know, processing while it's trying to kind of. Exactly. You know. So primarily water. And honestly, a lot of times when we think we're hungry, especially after dinner, we're not. It takes our brain 20 minutes to tell our tummy that it's hungry. Wow. So what I often tell clients to do is before you reach for the snack, because it's a habit, instead, Wait, give yourself 20 minutes, like legit set a timer for 20 minutes and see if in 20 minutes you're still feeling hungry. And if you are, go have your snack. Right. But if it's just a habit thing, then really figure out if that habit is serving you and it, it might not be. Mm -hmm. Maybe you drink a, some tea or some flavored tea or you have a glass of water before bed or some lemon tea I also love to have before bed. So there are things you can also do to break those habits if it's not serving you for sure. Awesome. Yep, absolutely. So that's a good one. So we have one here that's actually on the other kind of other extreme. So Dawn Green says that uh, the last few days she's been stressed about the news uh, that she doesn't feel hungry. Uh, mm. I, uh, I, she, I can't eat when I have this stress feeling. Um, I ate only one each day. I don't even drink liquids either. Any yeah. advice for that? I, I, I'm one of those, when I get stressed, I tend not to eat. I tend to kind of shut down a little bit. Yeah, I have a lot of clients like that as well. So I always say um, for those moments, like we have to understand that we need food. So 
I think we can all agree that food needs to be had for us to sustain. It's one thing if you're stressed for a day and you don't eat, let that pass. Like that's just called life. That's called being a human. Yeah. But if you notice that it's a pattern and then you, something you really need to curb, my suggestion would 100% be see how you can find ways to drink your food. Because I have a lot of clients that can, will get, you can get a lot of macronutrients and micronutrients now that we kind of know what that is out of a smoothie. Yeah. So maybe you're having a smoothie throughout the day and you're not necessarily ready or have the energy to sit down and eat and create a whole meal. But if you have things, you can put oats in your smoothie, peanut butter in your smoothie. You can put really nutrient dense foods in a smoothie, yeah. to protein powder in a smoothie to really kind of get everything you need to get in without sitting down and making a whole meal. Mm -hmm. Soups. You can really puree some pumpkin and some sweet potato and things like that and make it into a soup. So you're essentially drinking your food and drinking your nutrients. So I would say on the, when those days come, just recognize that we need food to fuel. Mm -hmm. I mean, have the day. If you're going to have a day where you don't eat, we're all human. It's fine. But if you notice that it's a pattern, find a ways, find ways to drink your food. Yep. Um, that's what a lot of clients, especially clients who get like, I find a lot of clients who have nausea or just don't mm. like find the time to eat. You can freeze smoothies, you can freeze soups, and then you can just thaw them out and eat them and, and get your nutrients in that way. Okay. And Dawn said she's been eating primarily that way all her life. She just has a hard time eating when she feels stressed. Yeah. Uh, stress. Stress is a killer, man. It's in more ways than one. Uh, yeah. So, okay. So you shared at the top of uh, this chat that you lost 90 pounds. Can you tell the audience how, how did you change your mindset and your eating habits to help support that, uh, that, that amazing weight loss? Yeah. So it was like, I can't stress this enough. It was gradual. I did not go from eating McDonald's for lunch, breakfast, literally breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I would eat takeout to turning into everything organic. Like I did not go from zero to a hundred. I, I just posted on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, it's Tamika G. I just posted like what I ate to lose the first 40 pounds. It was Raisin Bran cereal for breakfast. It was a deli wrap from the, so I was still eating out, but it was a deli wrap. It was like a tuna wrap from a deli store and it was homemade pasta for dinner. I just made minor changes and I stopped eating whole tubs of ice cream and I would have half of tubs of ice cream. I would stop eating whole chocolate, whole chocolate bars per day. And then as you start to lose weight, you find your groove and you find ways to tweak and refine. And, and then this healthy lifestyle evolves and snowballs. What I think the biggest gap with people is they try to go from zero to a hundred. They try to go from eating the tub of ice cream and eating out every day to just completely having smoothies and boiled chicken and broccoli for bread, like every meal. It just doesn't work like that. The mind needs time to change. And for it to really last and sustain, it's because you've got to grow with this journey. You can't just flip it on and expect it to work. Mm -hmm. So why I've been able to keep the weight off for 15 years is because I grew with this journey. What I eat today is not what I ate when I lost 90 pounds. Okay. Because when I lost 90 pounds, I was still learning and I was making small tweaks and changes. And it was, mm -hmm. you know, slowly moonwalking my way out of a very poor health style, um, healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, I'm standing much stronger. But if I had turned off from where I was when I was 90 pounds heavier to eating today, it would have lasted maybe two weeks and I probably would have fallen back off the wagon. So I'm yeah. so happy I did the gradual approach. It, it was, it was the best thing I could have done for my journey long-term. I mean, I, I really am so happy that you say that because every, you know, our society just wants everything so instant. And, you know, I just saw it on Instagram. Somebody did this for two weeks and they lost, you know, wait, yada, I, I, you know, do you think the goalie, gummies work, you know, uh, because yeah. <laughs> uh, they said that they're losing, yeah. you know, so, so with that said, so in other words, people, it takes time, but yes. it's time well spent. And like, let's be very clear. I tried everything. Like I tried, I remember I was on those purple light pills. I was, <laughs> I did the Beyonce lemonade diet. I did the two week green cleanse. I did all the things, but it was me doing all those things and realizing that that wasn't gonna work that had me pivot to find something that did. So if you're someone who's sitting there and you're like, yep, that's me, don't feel bad. All those things, you did all those things to get you to a place where you're ready for the long-term solution. Like they did not happen in vain. They had a purpose. They were part of your journey. And now you're ready to move on to something that's gonna serve you. Uh
Absolutely. So since I brought up goalie gummies, what do you think of them? Um, I, <laughs> I think you know what I think of them. <laughs> I would say any kind of like supplements and stuff. I mean, just know that millions of dollars are put into this, into marketing to sell us. And we've just got to be extra particular about what we put in our bodies, research, learn, understand. Mm -hmm. Remember, the FDA can say organic and all natural. There are very loose terms. Um, so just educate yourself because at the end of the day, this body is all we've got. So we've got to treat it like, like the temple it is. Absolutely. I just noticed the other day I was scrolling and Goli, yeah, Goli Gummies just came out with uh, Ashawanga. Gummy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, well, what is that? Oh, they're supposed to help you relax and help with uh, inflammation. I'm like, oh, okay, they're going to keep this going. I see. That. Yeah, they are. And that, the, the millions of markets, we keep, truth, truth is, we keep feeding the beast with, you know, we give them the dollars and then that allows them to pump more money into marketing and sales and power to them. We live in a capitalistic world. I get it, but it's just, I really just want to empower people to be in charge of their decisions and not be sideswiped by these yeah. companies. So yeah, so Marla said, Goli Gummies did nothing for me. They are too sweet. Like, oh. Yeah, not surprised <laughs> at all. My, my husband walked in here with Goli Gummies and I'm like, clutch my pearls, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, I went to PNC and I asked the guy about apple cider vinegar and he pointed me to gut to the gummies. I, I said, have I taught you nothing? So. No, it's, but we're fighting a beast. We're fighting millions of dollars of yeah. professional storytellers. Like that's what we're trying to fight with our, yeah. our voices. So yeah, it's educate your friends, educate yep. yourself. It's really all we can do. Read, read, read those labels. So mm -hmm. another question from Talita um, Bazemore. She says, I struggle with nutrition. I, a traditional balanced meal consists of fruit, veggies, and protein. I'm allergic to fresh fruit. Oh my goodness. So I recently tried keto since the meal plan didn't really use fruit, but it cuts carbs. I can't seem to stay on track because I crave rice, bread, pasta, uh, which knocks me out of ketosis. I honestly don't know how to eat a bad meal for weight loss. Any suggestions? And what's the allergy again? Just fruit? fruit. Fresh. I mean, I feel sorry for her because I love fruit. <laughs> um, but I would say like there are other natural, if you're, if you're someone who likes, first of all, there are far more other complex carbs you can have that are not fruit. So things like grains, like rice, like potatoes, sweet potatoes, all natural potatoes. Like, I don't know where the vernacular came that made those, those foods that come out of the ground, yeah. like God given ground. Why do people consider them bad for us? This is what I mean by the marketing dollars. Mm -hmm. Like y'all, we've got to change our mindset. I've had clients, thousands of clients lose weight, eating potatoes and eating <laughs> pasta and eating these things that, you know, if they're good ingredients and we're reading the back and we can pronounce anything, it's not bad. Carbs are not bad. What's bad are the wrong carbs. Yeah. So having things like processed sugars and white flowers in, in, in abundance, those are the things we need to be mindful of. Mm -hmm. So I would say balance for you is the same just without the fruit. Balance, if you talk about those macronutrients, making sure when you're looking at your plate, you see a good amount of veggies, some healthy fats, Mm -hmm. So that can be anywhere from oils to avocados to really well sourced and produced cheeses, having really healthy fats, having protein and having complex carbohydrates, that's balanced. So um, fruit, and again, I'm, I'm so really sorry that you're allergic to fruit because I love fruit, but oh. you know, if you're someone who craves kind of sweets, there's other things you can have that aren't the processed stuff that you can still have that sweet. So dried, um, dried fruit probably can't have, but for instance, what I would do is maybe throw some like all natural agave or maple syrup in my oatmeal to get a sweet tooth. Mm -hmm. um, I'll have to brainstorm, dark chocolate's also really good. There are other ways for you to get in that sweet without the fruit, but the balance, the balance approach doesn't change because of the allergy to fruit. It's just fighting the messaging that for some reason, somewhere, somebody told us carbohydrates are bad for us and really reworking that, that, that narrative. No, absolutely. And if you want to know some proper portion sizes, you can go to my plate. I think it's myplate.gov 
or dot com but either way they have a plate and it shows you this is like what protein portion looks like this is what carb portion vegetable um or fat um and then vegetable but this is what your plate should look like um and you know obviously the adjustment is based on allergies um and things like that so mm -hmm. i hope that was helpful for you i'm going to go through here so you hit we touched on a little bit with foley so what about uh, supplements? Um, do you recommend supplements for people, for individuals, or you know, recommend that they look at them to you know support their weight maintenance or weight loss? So I'm anti supplements for a reason because I think we've misconstrued what supplements are for. Supplements are used to help us if we're deficient in something. So we're deficient, we use a supplement to get us back up to our regular levels. So the only time I endorse supplements is if you've gotten the blood work done and you are low on vitamin D. Go get a vitamin D tablet to bring those supplements back up to supplementary levels. Right. That's how I use supplements. Okay. Um, but if you, I get regular checkups with the doctor. So if my levels are good, why am I going to just have supplements to add on to an already yeah. good, decent plate? Because they told me I need to have this new vitamin because <laughs> they meaning the marketers out there. Yeah. So just be really mindful of the messaging that you're hearing and what your body actually needs. Mm -hmm. Um, your body will tell you when you're deficient in something, you'll notice the offness. You might notice inflammation, extra dry skin extra tired, low fatigue, at which point I wouldn't just get any supplement off of the counter. I'd go to a natural naturopath or a doctor, get my levels checked, see what I'm deficient in, and then top that up with a supplement and make sure that supplement is organic and a good quality supplement. We're not going for low cost when we go to supplements. We are looking for the high quality supplement to really not just run through our system, but stay in our system. Yeah. So I'm only anti-supplement because I think the industry has again told us that we need all these things that we probably don't need mm -hmm. um and in fact i think we should just use supplements when we're deficient okay great so donna says great point and i i agree <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just some of my clients every time every day my clients will come to me with oh i, I just saw this on on instagram should i get it and it's like well why like let's start with why yeah because somebody told you who's not certified, not a doctor, who told you you should have it, like, no. Yes, and that's the other point too, folks. There's a lot of people on Instagram, doesn't necessarily mean they're qualified, certified, or anything. They have made themselves the authority on X, Y, and Z. So like Tamika says, do your, do your research, do your own independent research, don't just go by what people say or what have you. That's what anything, um, yeah. and you know, then make your decision. And I'll give you an example, like for the last week or so, I just haven't been sleeping. Mm -hmm. And that's abnormal for me because I'm someone who normally gets sleep. So I made an appointment on Tuesday to go to the doctor and I'm probably gonna be low in something. And when I get my levels checked, then I'll go to the supplement store and buy good supplements to get me back up to whatever I'm low in. Right. And that's kind of how you approach it. It's like, okay, I noticed there's a, sim there's a symptom. Mm -hmm. How do I get to the root cause of that symptom? And then, then, then use a supplement to help me get back my my levels back up. That's yeah. how I'd like people to approach supplements versus buying the new shiny thing. Yeah, <laughs> very good point. And several people here agree with you. Donna De Blasio, Grossi Grassi says great point about supplements, and she just has. She says she loves everything about you. Oh, <laughs> so Dawn has a question. Um, Dawn Green, does age uh does age factor in when it comes to dieting um and eating style and weight loss as women age our hormones are changing do you have different advice for your clients under under 45 than those over 45. yeah so that's where you need to check your hormone levels that's where we need a doctor and i'm not a doctor that's where we need to check the hormone levels because yes so generally speaking our muscle mass reduces as we get older our metabolism reduces as we get older. I look at it as like nature telling us that, like God telling us that as we get older, we should be slowing down. Like I think we're always trying to fight the aging process, of course, yeah. still be healthy and stuff, but you're not gonna be doing a hundred minutes of hit if you're 40, 50, 60, you don't need to be doing that. Your body's telling you it's time to slow down. You put in the work. So 
I think when it comes to movement, we've got to be really kind to our body as we get older, um, be a little more gentle. Even now, as I'm approaching my mid to late thirties, I'm not approaching my movement as I was in my twenties. I'm getting, my body is getting older and that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I just trusting that graceful process. So that's just a mindset thing, I think. Yeah. And when it comes to actual weight loss, hormones are everything. So I would say your first thing is to go and get checked, get your levels checked, um, understand what sensitivities you have. Um, because a lot of times as we get older, our sensitivities change. We can become intolerant to things every seven years. As we get older, those intolerances kind of tend to stack up. So what I find so frustrating with some of my clients or what my clients find so frustrating and I feel for them is that they're doing everything under the sun, but they're not seeing results. The minute I go have them get their levels checked, get their hormones checked to make sure that then you start to see, oh, I'm actually gluten intolerant. I used to eat gluten all the time. Oh, okay. I removed gluten from my diet and there you go. There are my results. So as you get older, you just have to be a little more strategic, but it's still possible. We have clients over 45, 50 that are dropping 10, 15, 20 pounds. We have clients, I had my oldest client was 67. <laughs> I tend to not go over 60 because I'm not, a, I'm not specialized in seniors. I'm 65, I'm not specialized in seniors, but you know, she was young and she, she was young in spirit and she kind of had all this energy and she lost 20 pounds. Wow. It's possible. Yeah, it's 100% possible. You just got to be a little more strategic. And I would just say, let's trust this. Let's trust the aging process with grace. I don't know. <laughs> that's my, that's my opinion. <laughs> okay. So, okay, yes. Well, yes. As someone who's older, I agree. Uh, we can't just do everything like we used to. We can, you know, all those sprints and in boot camp and suicides and all of that. I, I just went, um, Tuesday, I just felt like I sit all day because of work. And I said, I'm just going to go at seven o'clock. I'm just going to go walk around my neighborhood, walk three miles. And I don't normally walk outside like that mm. anymore. I used to run outside a lot, but I don't. And just that walk, <laughs> three point two miles around my neighborhood, back to my house. The next day, my shins were on fire. My calves were on fire. Right? I was like, wait a minute. I just walked. But yeah. I don't do that distance anymore outside on that surface. And so, yeah, we got to be kind. <laughs> we got to have grace to the aging process. It's just a part of life. Um, that's my opinion, at least. Oh, so Mar and funny, Marla says she agrees with Dawn. How about those over 55? But I think you pretty much may have answered. Yeah, get your levels checked. That's where the homo, especially as you hit menopause, pre-menopause, post-menopause. My mom, actually, my mom is turning 60 this year and Ooh. or 60 61 this year and she we together we lost 25 pounds she's now she's been in the pre-diabetic stage was hit, hitting like diabetes and now she's just studying the pre-diabetic stage so yeah it's possible but again i send it to the doctor get her levels checked let's figure out exactly what you should be having yep um and we even packed that with a nutritionist and oh. she and with that and some movement she was able to um bring her levels down and yeah. Everything was balanced. Everything's great. Awesome. Yeah. So walk some people through the grocery store. They come in and, you know, the grocery stores, boy, they do a number. Folks don't realize that is a thirst trap, okay? <laughs> they have the right lighting, the right presentation to music. <laughs> yes, the music, the ambiance, the environment. You would be surprised. All that is not by coincidence. It is all deliberate. Um, so when people are going in, uh, what are some, what's, what are some, what's some advice you can offer for people who are trying to eat more balanced, but not, you know, get caught up in, you know, in, in getting things that may not support them in that effort. Yeah. So I think it's acknowledging what you just said, that people are paid millions of dollars for the design and the aesthetic and the appeal of a grocery store to help you buy impulsively. So enter the grocery store with a list. I know it's archaic, but I know it works. You go in there with intention, you know for sure what you're gonna be purchasing. You're not gonna be dazzled by all the shiny lights. So go in with intention. For me, I cook for myself and my partner. I know what we're eating every day throughout the week. I know what we're having for breakfast, lunch, dinner. I plan it out and then from that, I drive a grocery list. And I just honor my list. I don't buy outside of the list and I just honor that. So that's a mindset thing going in. Don't ever go into the grocery store hungry. 
that is just I've done it. I think grocery store 101 um, because you're definitely going to buy more than you need mm -hmm. and start with the perimeter of the grocery store. So start walking around the produce section, everything kind of on the perimeter and then make your way through the aisles. So there's some strategy you can have through that because the perimeter is where you're gonna get the fresh produce mm -hmm. and the aisles is typically where it's the packaged stuff. So start maybe revisit how you can kind of change your path mm -hmm. going around and then through the aisles. Again, looking at the ingredients of everything you buy. Um, yeah. I always try to buy organic, but I don't just trust that it's organic on the front. I look on the back and make sure it's really organic. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you're, kind of waiting in the line that be mindful of those end caps be mindful of the chocolates and the things that are again strategically placed there like you said very deliberately placed there to entice you to pick up as you're you're you're, you're waiting to to cash out just be mindful of all of the marketing plugs every time now for me i think it's so apparent because i'm so aware and i get so frustrated i'm like how dare you trick people like this it's just so frustrating oh, yeah. Yeah, so you just got to be mindful. I mean, we mentioned it earlier, this, this bag of raw, you know, this bag of roasted peanuts is gluten-free. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is just ridiculous. Stop, like, stop playing with So maybe, yeah, maybe if somebody's having a hard time navigating, maybe you order your food online. Maybe then it's just a matter of you're not going to get the appeal. And I mean, now they probably have people online that are making it the same experience that you have in the grocery store, they're making it online, but at least you can then take a list and be very deliberate with your ordering and not having mm -hmm. to fight all of the temptations that are physically in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good, good point. So someone asked, what is your, what is on your grocery list? So I, so I'm in a relationship now. We've been together for about two years. He's a German man, which means he loves his meat. So we try to find a balance between fish and meat. Okay. Um, I cook usually in two day pockets. So I cook about three meals a week and each meal lasts me for two days. It's just a system that works for me. I don't like to cook every day. So I'll, at the beginning of the week, I'll plan what three dinners I want. It's usually something that I can make in bulk for the next two nights. Okay. For me, lunches are always salads. It just works. I'll pick my toppers to be different things. It can be tuna, it can be Chicken breast can be something, but salads just work. And then my breakfast, I usually oscillate between oats, cereal, toast. Oats, cereal, oh, okay. cereal, toast. I'm someone who loves to have um, carbs for breakfast okay. because it just energizes me for the day. That's what works for my body type. Mm -hmm. um, so when I kind of plan out my week, Monday is going to be oats, Tuesday will be cereal, Wednesday will be toast, yeah. Thursday will be oats. I just then I can go to the grocery store with those exact things. Okay. So I buy fruits as well, because fruits I'll either topple on my breakfast or I'll have for snacks. Um, and that's my grocery list usually. Mm -hmm. um, I'll throw in some dark chocolate and things to make it fun and exciting, but I always go in with a list and okay. that's, that's very intentional. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm Marlene, you know, we used to work together. <laughs> Oh, yay. I love my friends are coming in. Um, and people that I went to school with back when I was a young and I see them watching too. So awesome. Love that. <laughs> Angel Edmonds, nice to have you here. Uh, so we're going to be wrapping up soon, but what are some final, final words of wisdom for people who are really, uh, you know, want to do better, want to, you know, eat better, eat to live, not live to eat, eat for energy and all these things. Um, what are some final words that you have for them? So probably look within. Don't look outwards. Don't look to social media. Don't look to Google. Don't look to the latest magazine that you've been reading. Like really look within. Um, it always starts with analysis and reflection because nobody's going to know your body like you. Mm -hmm. Understand your gaps when you look within. Don't go and buy all of these things online if it's not personal to you and what you need like really have a deep analysis look on yourself and what it is you need and then identify your gaps what are your gaps okay i eat way too much sugar if i'm gonna be honest with myself i don't eat enough i'm skipping breakfast every meal whatever the gaps are for you identify those gaps list them out write them out then figure out a way that you can slowly and i can't emphasize this enough slowly get yourself out of that gap. So if you, if sugar is a problem for you, don't do the two, three week sugar cleanse. Like just don't figure out a way that you can slowly moonwalk your way out of that habit. 
because I'm telling you, we've all done it. And that's the reason why we're all here. It's yeah. because we're so tired of trying these things and being extreme and not at being able to sustain it. Yep. The way to sustain it is to make it a lifestyle. Yep. So it's first do the reflection analysis. Second, identify your unique gaps, not the gaps you see online, but your unique gaps. And then figure out a way for you to seamlessly integrate new habits into your lifestyle. And the way you do that is a slow but steady approach. I'm writing it up for them. <laughs> no, that's fine. I'm happy to repeat it because I believe in it so deeply. Like people will be like, oh, I saw online that I need to eat. I need to drink, you know, three liters of water a day. I'm going to start that tomorrow. It's like, no, no, no. If you're having, <laughs> you know, 16 ounces of water today, don't go try and like, Tomorrow, just try for 17 ounces. Then the next week, maybe 18 ounces. And then in 365 days, you're gonna get to your goal and you're just gonna stay there <laughs> because you're not doing this back and forth, zero to 100 nonsense. Yeah. Let's just give ourselves grace. We have to be moms, we have to be siblings, we have to be coworkers, we have to be community leaders, we have to be households. Like, no, 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 like, <laughs> like stop. <laughs> stop it, just stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Well, thank you so, so much. Again, we have, uh, oh, we've been joined by Kathy Sugar Free Williams. Um, she actually uh, reversed her pre-diabetic uh, diagnosis. Um, and well, uh, she says gradual sugar-free living habits next week. Yep, that's our next, that's our topic for uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so Elizabeth Taylor, thank you so much for the info. Um, and I repeated some things. Yushi, also thank you for all the information. Any final words? No, I would say when it comes to, um, if we want to work together, I think you have a link that you're going to share with your community. We have a seven day free trial into our incredible, Don is actually in our membership. Um, it's just this incredible community of women who are approaching this wellness journey the way that we need to be approaching it holistically. Mind, body, spirit, mm -hmm. nice and slow and steady, nothing extreme. And it's just a safe space for you to be a part of, to enjoy the process in a way that I feel really works. Um, so I'm really excited. We're offering a seven day free trial, um, into that program. And I'm actually doing the, the 28 day program that lives within the membership right now. And I'm just really appreciating the grace that this program offers. So I really love to have as many people in join me as possible. Right. It's all about holistic living and yes. love. it's not just about, you know, weight loss. That's great. But there's other, there's more to your body than just losing weight. Um, and I yes. will share a link in this thread and I will share it, um, throughout the group and in the newsletter. So make sure you're signed up for that. Uh, thank you again, Tamika. It was a pleasure. Um, and As always. Oh, Donna, oh, Donna's in your tribe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, Donna. Um, well, you know how amazing Tamika is, and I'm glad that my audience got a chance to see how amazing she is as well. Thank you so much for all that helpful advice, guys. I hope this was very helpful for all of you. I think it was. Um, there are other topics you'd like for us to discuss. If you'd like for Tamika to come back and there's other things you would like to know about, definitely let me know, let her know, let us know, let somebody know. Uh, closed mouth doesn't get fed. So with that said, have a happy Saturday. Enjoy your Valentine's Day. Don't stress out about what you ate or didn't eat. Just get right back on track once you enjoy yourself. Um, and we will talk soon. I'll see you in a couple weeks. Talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for having me. Bye, everybody.